page 158, Divine Service 2, the first setting, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what, what we have done, done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your pleasure and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, redo us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your love and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn to page 72. For the introit for the eleventh Sunday after the Pentecost, <clears throat> and we'll use the one year series beginning in the left hand column. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is, he is our, our help and our shield. shield. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down. And sees all mankind. mankind. From his dwelling place he watches. All who on live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who does everything, everything they, do. they do. The eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear Him. On those who hope is in His unfailing love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit. Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, now and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our shield and our shield. And we go to page 159 where we continue with the Kyrie. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And we go back to page 73 and pray aloud the comment of the day. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without you, protect and govern it always by your goodness. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading. For today is from the 73rd Psalm, beginning with the 25th verse, Whom have I in heaven but you, and earth has nothing I desire beside you? My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. And then from Daniel, the ninth chapter. Now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand, 
and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day. We have sinned, we have done wrong. O Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. Our sins and the iniquities of our fathers have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to all those around us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, O Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, O God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, listen. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hear and act. For your sake, O oh my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. And then from Romans, the ninth chapter. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and increasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption as sons. Theirs is the divine glory, the, co the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. It is not as though God's word had failed, for not all who are descended from Israel are Israel, nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. At the appointed time I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children had one of the same father, our father Isaac, yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose and election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger. Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. One of you will say to me, Then why does God still blame us for who resists his will? But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, Oh, why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of place some pottery for noble purposes and some for common purposes? What if God, choosing to show his wrath and make his powers known, go with great patience the objects of his wrath prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory? Even us, whom he also called not only from the Jews but from the Gentiles, as he says in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people, and I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. So far, the word of our Lord. And then from Luke, the 19th chapter. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. <coughs> the days will come upon you when you, 
<coughs> when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and pin you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. So far, the word of our Lord. There are a lot of people in the world who do not recognize the New Testament as authoritative scripture. Uh, Muslims don't. Uh, Jews don't. <laughs> the Church of England in England for certainly doesn't. The uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America says that God's words are in here somewhere. We hold that all of it is the Word of God, and accurate and true. And the odd thing is, is almost everybody who doesn't believe it's the authoritative Word of God looks at this particular scripture, and there's no way they can escape that Jesus spoke the truth. Some of them try to deny that it was Jesus who said this, the disciples wrote it in later. Uh, but by and large, even Jews and Muslims mostly agree that Jesus said this, and he said it 70 years before Jerusalem was literally torn down when the Romans came and burned it to the ground. So, if even the enemies of the faith recognize this as the truth spoken here, we ought to too, and we ought to examine it very closely. I want you to hear it again. If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring <coughs> you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. <coughs> The day will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and him you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. And that's the phrase that really means something, because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. The Jews still look forward to a Messiah. The Muslims don't believe in any sort of Messiah at all, and certainly don't believe Jesus was a Messiah. But they believe the closest they're going to get is Muhammad, to whom some angel appeared, not God himself. In other words, they have all their scriptures second hand. If we had a larger group, they would play the game of, uh, of uh, telephone, mm -hmm. where you have 25 or 30 people. And I whisper to Matthew, hey, God is beautiful. And by the time it gets around through 30 people, Dottie's over here slapping the heck out of me because what Joe tells her is, no, he's just a good time. <laughs> I mean, it changes as it goes. I mean, so do you want secondhand news or do you want firsthand news from God? I mean, I like the firsthand news right here. Because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. The angels told us that, and Jesus himself informed us of that, and Jesus is the Son of God, and he is God, and we have it firsthand. 
And there were a whole lot of people in Jerusalem that didn't pay any attention to that. A lot of them did when they saw Jesus rose from the dead. You know, a lot of people saw it. And people believed, and people believed uh, the, the witnesses, the eyewitnesses of that. Even though it was secondhand, they believed, as we believe. Uh, but there were many people there who did not. And I think we've talked about heavenly time before, and this is important. Jesus also, before this, said, this temple will be torn down, and in three days I'll build it back. And of course, when they were snarling at him at his trial, uh, they were accusing him of wanting to tear the temple down. Uh, never mind that he was going to build it back. Let's see. We were angry at the guys who destroyed the ten twin towers in New York. They tore them down. They never had the opportunity to build them back. To do. But had they bought the twin towers, evacuated them, dynamited them, and built an even bigger building, they'd have been heroes, wouldn't they? Well, of course, that's not the way they went about it. But they were accusing Jesus of being a terrorist, in effect, threatening to destroy the temple, even though, obviously, he didn't have the means to do it. But uh, it was thought police. It's all a trumped-up deal, but... Uh, but Jesus had said he would build it back, and was he talking about Herod's temple all gleaming white over there on the hill. Not at all. He was talking about his own body. The temple. Him. And in three days it would be built back. And he's not talking about the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 years, except maybe only incidentally here. He's talking about the destruction that comes to those who don't believe. Let's see now. In the end, there, in the end times, there will be gnashing of teeth, and the clouds will turn dark. And is that talking, Daddy, about some day a million years from now, or whenever God comes in His thundering glory? Is He talking about me on the day of my death? He's talking about me on the day of my death. And this destruction he's talking about here is for these people who are failing to believe, whoever they are, on the day of their death, not sometimes 70 years, not sometimes 7,000 years or 700,000 years in the future or whenever. Those who fail to believe, it will be like your enemies are coming up against you and close circling you on every side and dashing you to the ground, and there is no one to help you, no one to hold on to. Those of faith in a time of peril like that, in the hour of death, we have someone to hold on to, no and not necessarily a spouse or a girlfriend or such because there comes at a time when you're dying when you can't even feel or know they're there. But we have Jesus hand to hold us and take us through the other side. And in fact, we have nothing at all to fear. And the reason our Lord has wept is because it distresses him that there are people who turn away and reject his hand and refuse to hold it, <coughs> refuse to have any, any part of him in those times. The psalm we, we heard earlier, was a song of, well, it was a love poem, really. Uh, whom have I in heaven but you? And on earth 
carpet and earth has nothing I desire beside you. So, let's see, Donnie. If I die, so you've gone on before me. Not like who's known as you are, but. Yeah. Uh, can I hold out my hand to you and let you help me into heaven? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who have I in heaven but, he's talking to God here, who have I but you? You're not going to help me in either, are you, Matthew? Nope. Didn't think so. <laughs> we have our Lord, depend on. And this is a love poem. We have going here, my flesh and my heart may fail. And there's no may to that, is there? It will. But God has the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And then this sad one, and this was the thing Jesus was weeping about. Those who are far from you will perish. So, we have a blessing, a great blessing. Our Lord has drawn near to us. We shouldn't pull away from Him and become far from Him. We have the blessing of His nearness. Now and in the hereafter. And one of the joys of that, somebody this week was trying to explain to me jihad, uh, which is a very confusing concept for Westerners. And we don't need to be on any kind of warpath, do we? About anything at any time. Because God is taking care of us. He's doing what we need to have done that. He takes care of it. Uh, we don't need to get upset about a whole lot. We just trust in Him and do what we're supposed to do every day. If that means go to work, we go to work. If that means take care of the kids, it means take care of the kids. If not, not. You know, whatever He puts in front of us. Amen. Let us turn to the Apostles' Creed on page 167. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you that your hand is upon us. We thank you that you have sent your Son to be with us to give us peace, to guide us away from thinking distress is an answer to anything, to take distress and fear away from us, and to hold our hand as we go through the dangers of this world and the dangers of the end of our life and into the life to come. Lord, we ask you to be with those who do not believe and to bring them knowledge through your Holy Spirit of the Comforter, to bring them knowledge of the comfort that our Lord Jesus Christ can bring to every heart and to every soul. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we turn then to page 170. And continue. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we come before you giving you thanks and praise at all times. And therefore, with angels and archangels and all the hosts of heaven, 
we come before you evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us children of men. <coughs> and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may establish in us a living faith, and prepare us joyfully to remember our Redeemer, and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I'll take it into the very body of Christ, given into death for you. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord Jesus, shed for the remission of your sins. Take it, it is my body will be shed for you. Take drink. There's a couple of New Testament shed for you for the remission of sin. Take a deep and very bodily Christ given into death for you. Take and drink Take a deep and very bodily Christ. There's a couple of New Testament shed for you for the remission of sin. Take drink. There's a couple of New Testament shed for you for the remission of sin. Take drink. There is a cup of the New Testament shed for you for the remission of sins. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord Jesus bless you and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.